Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and after listening to all of these questions and comments that I get, I wanted to create this tutorial and it's called Adobe User Interface Clues. The Adobe engineers work very, very hard to try to make as much of their applications as discoverable as possible. That's always a big topic. Discoverable meaning you didn't open a manual, you didn't train, you didn't learn, you just open the application and you want to discover things. If an icon is universally understood, then you'll use it right away. But if it's a little bit harder to understand, you probably won't or you'll be confused by it. The good thing is that Adobe engineers try to standardize as much as possible across all the user interfaces. And I'm gonna show you some of those. I'll show you the stuff that's easy to understand, but then I'll show you the stuff that maybe you've missed. The other thing I wanna make clear is that so many times I get a question and all you had to do was click on some. Just, just click on some. Here's your first user interface clue. Right click on everything. Right clicking, okay, if you're a Mac user, right clicking was enabled on Mac OS X a long, long time ago. Um, although you have one button on your trackpad, it actually functions with two. If you stick a, a typical two button mouse on, it's gonna work. So I'm gonna say right click, right click a lot. But on, on the Mac, you might have to hold the control key down and click, control click, right click, same thing. On Windows user, just right click on everything. Adobe makes these contextual menus, meaning it's a context menu based on what you're clicking on. So just start right clicking on things. There's a really good chance of what you're looking for is in the menu that pops up to right click, okay? Let's have a look at some of the things that I think are important. Okay, so like I said, right click on anything. Look, I'll right click there and I'll right click here and I'll right click here and I'll right click there and I'll right click. So right clicking, a huge amount of information comes up based on where you're right clicking. So just try that first. The next thing is disclosure triangles and that's these little triangles that you see that pop up. You'll notice that when I twirl down motion, you'll see a bunch of other things in here. Some of these already have triangles, some of them don't. And again, I'm trying to get you to, to open these up. Now, let's do something interesting here. I'm going to uh, take this video and I'll scale it up and watch what happens. I'm gonna drag this over to the left and add a keyframe. As soon as I do, you see another disclosure triangle show up. I'm gonna add another keyframe over here and move this over here. Now watch this, I'll turn this down. Ooh, look at these, nice. If I drag this down and click on this, now look, I've got information deep inside here. If I didn't click on the disclosure triangles, I wouldn't have known that, I wouldn't see that, I didn't know that. Did this hurt anything? Not at all. You just have to feel confident enough that when you see those little identifiable clues is what I'm calling them. Hey, it's a triangle. Let me open that up and see if there's anything in there. So that's a big one. All right. The next is flyout menus. And that's these little guys right here. The user interface standard that people are calling these three lines are hamburger menus. And when you click on them, you'll get information. Now I'm gonna show you these disclosure triangles in Photoshop and how they're different, but they're everywhere that you can see them. The one thing you'll notice in the video applications, the latest update does not have tabs. Instead, it has an underline underneath this. You'll also notice that this flyout menus are directly beside the menu name. And that's really important because some of these uh, panels actually had the name over here and then the flyout menu way over there. And a lot of users didn't uh, connect the little three lines, the hamburger menu, the flyout menu, with the thing that it was. So the video application engineers moved everything right beside it. Photoshop still got it over in the side. I'll show you that in a second. But these little menus hold an enormous amount of information. They're very important. And you'll see them even in the timeline. You've got them in here. You've got them in the program monitor. You got them in the source monitor. You got them in the clip mixer. You got them everywhere. They're everywhere. And they contain contextual information. So only the functions for that panel in that flyout menu will make sense. Many of them are just panel based. 
close the panel, undock the panel, things like that. But some of them, like in the project and media browser, are very important. All right, I mentioned these uh, in Photoshop, so let's go have a look at Photoshop. And you'll see, here's swatches, there's the flyout menu over there on the right-hand side. Here's color, there's the flyout menu. There's layers, there's the flyout menu. So Photoshop still has this tab idea, but the flyout menu idea is still very important. Let's go back to Premiere Pro and look at wrenches and gears. This again is becoming a more common interface item, not just on uh, desktop and laptops, but also on mobile devices. The idea of where the settings are. Sometimes it's a Hamburg menu, sometimes it's a gear, sometimes it's a wrench. So here is a perfect example. You'll see a wrench here, you'll see a wrench there, and you'll see a wrench there. Click on them for crying out loud. Oh, look at how much information is inside there. Very useful information. And again, it is contextual. So it depends on what panel and what application those functions are. Okay, I wanna go and show you in Photoshop, if I grab the brushes and we go up to the top and pop the brushes out, it's a gear, not a wrench, but still very useful for information. Let's go grab the custom shape tool and over here there's a little disclosure triangle click on that guy oh boy there's a little gear and here's how you can change what you see in this uh, view there's also a little gear over here and they're giving you the idea that there's more information deep inside here so little disclosure triangles wrenches and gears all right, what about sync buttons? Now down on the bottom left-hand side, there's a sync settings button. So I can sync my settings in Creative Cloud. So you'll notice that this looks like the little Creative Cloud um, icon. It's actually that little CC Cloud thingy that's in there. So that should be another tool that you notice and give you a clue of, of uh, some of those settings. All right, here's another one that I, I jotted down because I thought, uh, this would be important, and, and that's workspaces. Workspaces are the collection of open panels that you happen to have. And every Adobe application ships with multiple workspaces that you can reset, very important. If you're looking for some of these things and you can't find them, and I find this sometimes in comments that, that people have closed the panel. In the window menu, in workspaces, look at that. You've got workspaces and you can reset that workspace. That's the same all the way across the applications. So if you can't find a wrench or a gear or a flyout menu or a panel, maybe the workspace needs to be reset. Next one, okay. Um, oh yeah, here's another one. Um, I get a question and, and this really comes from users that are, are fairly new to either creative applications or video editing applications. The window menu is, in my opinion, one of the most important menus in all Adobe applications. In the window menu, if you have a look, every single panel you want to get to is there. So sometimes I'll get a question, where is this panel? Uh, did you have a look in the window menu? Because there's a good chance it's there. Remember the workspaces? It was probably closed. Or you're not using a workspace, like where's the Lumetri color panel? Well, if you clicked on the color workspace, it would bring that to the front. Basically, if you can't find a panel, get your butt over to the window menu, and this is the same over in Photoshop, same in InDesign, same in all of those applications. So look for the panel you want in the window menu. Here's another one, scroll wheel. And this will work with a trackpad most of the time. Just start using the damn scroll wheel on top of things. Look at this, oh, look. And all of a sudden I get more information when I'm scrolling in here. Very, very useful in Premiere Pro. So start using the scroll wheel, just start scrolling on everything. All right, um, here's another one and I love this one. This goes all the way back to Photoshop uh, one, maybe two, and that's the new item icon. If you're wondering how to make a new thing, it's the little page. And if you're wondering how to delete something, it's a little trash can. So if we look down here at the bottom, there's the new item icon. And when you click on it, you see a lot of things. In Premiere Pro, you'll see more than one thing and then you'll see the trash can. They're universal. Let's go back over to Photoshop. There's the layers panel and there's a 
new item, but this one is a new layer. In the reason that there's a, a flyout menu for the new item in Premiere Pro is that the project bin can hold a bunch of things. The layer panel can only hold layers. The swatches can only hold swatches. So they're new item for that panel. Let's go have a look. Oh, there's a new layer. You click on it, you make a new layer. The channels, you can click on that, make a new channel. You can click on the path, you can make a new path. I think you get the idea. This is a universal thing um, in all Adobe applications. So the new item icon, if you're wondering how do I create, oh, let me go look for that page. Click on it, make a new whatever that is. Oh yeah, the other one is, uh, I'm just gonna grab a simple shape here and I'll show you that when we've got transform, this is another Adobe clue, another universal clue, that when you're moving the mouse around, you'll notice it turns into a rotate um, tool or a resize tool or a move tool. So I'm moving it, I'm resizing it. Another uh, convention that Adobe uses, holding Alt on Windows Option on Mac, you resize uh, equally on both sides, hold the shift key down and you'll constrain this to 45 degree increments, hold the option or alt again, and you've got that going, okay? So again, little clues for that. Let's jump back to uh, Premiere Pro and I wanna show you something else that's new. Remember I was mentioning that the video applications don't use tabs anymore. So instead of tabs, it, it's an underline under, under the, um, particular name, and if you go to the right, you'll see this double arrow that will show you all the other panels that are hiding back there. So if you don't have enough room, there used to be in some of the older versions, you'll see a horizontal scroll bar to get to the left and right. Now in the new ones, there's this double arrow thing to see those things. Hopefully that's discoverable. All right, let's go back to um, InDesign, I want to show you that although there are conventions that are universal, new item icon uh, across all of the applications, some of the engineers create new tools specifically for that application. And one thing you do a lot in Adobe InDesign is you're applying styles. You do that all day, every day. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to make a new custom icon for that. And that's this lightning bolt up in the top right hand corner. So if I click on this and click on that, I get to change this to anything I want very, very easily. And if you mouse over, you'll see a tool tip. Quick apply is control enter, command enter on um, the Mac. So it'll bring up the same thing. So sometimes there are universal conventions, but the good thing is that engineers don't have to just use those things. They do break out of their mold sometimes and create something new. So before you ask me a question, and it's okay if you do, because you know I answer you, but before you ask a question, try some of these things. Right click on stuff. Look at a fly up menu. Just use your scroll wheel. Look in the window menu. Try to find a few of these things. I'm trying to empower you, just like I was empowered many years ago that I had to figure out a lot of this stuff. Look in these places first before you ask a question because there's a good chance your answer is right in front of you. Thanks, thanks to the great Adobe engineers and some of their wonderful UI clues. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Revealed, come on and take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more? Join us, join us on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, it's my job to get you looking your best.